there! I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. I've been to another auction. So what did I buy while I was at the auction? Well, I only won one thing at the auction and it was these two computers right behind me. And how much did I pay for them? Well, it cost me a total of $12, just over $12 Canadian for both of them. It was one lot, that's including tax. What are they? Well, it's a, I would say a 2006 iMac and an HP Compaq 6000 Pro. Now these were advertised as for parts, not working. So if neither of these work, then I still don't think I did all that bad because there'll still be parts on it I can use. There's hard drives, there's RAM, there's all kinds of stuff like that I can scavenge off these to use in other projects. So what we're going to do today is we are going to see if, well, either of these work. What kind of deal did I get? The first one that I'm going to look at is the HP Compact 6000 Pro that I have here. Now it did not come with a power source. Fortunately, my Dell laptop power source does actually fit this. It's the right voltage. The amperage is a little bit higher on this than the original um, power source for this, but that shouldn't make a difference. I don't think. Now, trying to turn it on. And we get nothing. Now, full disclosure, I knew we were going to get nothing because I've messed around with this a little bit already. I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, and I'm going to take a complete shot in the dark. I'm going to try changing out the... Uh, probably completely dead CMOS battery in here and see if that helps. And I guess just have a look around to see if I can see anything that's wrong on the inside. This computer is about 25 years newer than any of the ones I usually work on, so I'm not hopeful. But for the price I paid for the computers, if nothing else, it's got some parts on it that I can use for other projects. So, let's get taking it apart. Now the first thing I have to do to take this thing apart is remove the stand. And there's a little arrow there, which I do believe means, yes, there's a little pry point there. There we go. And it looks like there are four screws in here. And this thing feels really heavy, so I think I will support it with my knee while I take these out. And there we go. That is out now. So I don't lose these screws. I'm just going to lightly place them back in their screw holes here. So A, I don't lose them, and B, I know where they will go. Okay, now that we have the stand off, uh, this panel right here, Yes, should slide right off, exposing the RAM. And this panel should also slide off, exposing the hard drive and the DVD drive. Now, there's three screws here that need to come out. And this should 
pop out. There we go. Exposing the motherboard. And if I read everything correctly, the battery should be under here somewhere. I can see the battery right there, which means this is the last piece that should have to come out. Hopefully. I can just see the edge of it under right here. There we go. And yes, there's the battery right here. All right, so I've gone handheld here just to show you that right down underneath the lip there, that's where the battery goes. I did pry it out. I just used a little metal pry thing because the CMOS battery here is completely dead, so there was no worries there. Now I will put a brand new one in. And here is my new one. Positive side goes up. We'll just slip that into place and then we'll use something not metal to push it down. We'll check that that's in place. All right, it looks good. So a little repositioning of the camera shows this is the hard drive right here. There's a screw right down in here that's actually connected to the casing by a spring. So you can undo that. And this should just pull forward and out. And there's your hard drive. And there's a screw right here that comes out. Nice long screw. And that is how you get your DVD drive out. This is a DVD rewriting drive. So, two simple things to be able to uh, just pull off here real quick. But now, I can start putting this all back together and see if it actually works changing the CMOS battery. All right, here we go. I've got everything plugged back in again. The battery has changed. It's back together. Let's see if it boots up. Nothing, not a sound, nothing. Well, as I said, I didn't have a lot of hope that that would work, but uh, I guess I'll do a little bit more research on this. I'd, like I said earlier though, at least uh, I picked up some cheap parts I can use. Well, now I guess it is time to take a quick look and see what the iMac is doing. So, as I said, this is an iMac from 
about 2006, I'm going to guess it's probably the first um, Intel version of the iMac because it's got the camera up here. Now it does boot up. Speakers sound a little uh, choppy. And eventually it boots into this GNU Grub version 2.02. .02. Uh, so that is unfortunately not what we're looking for. However, doing a little bit of research, it turns out that it looks like this means that somebody was running Linux on this computer and they erased it from the hard drive. And now when the computer tries to boot up, it can't find any of the proper stuff to boot. So that looks like there's a few things I can try with this to maybe try and get it working. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do some more research on that. But on the plus side, at least it's turning on. And yeah, the screen looks, albeit a little bit dirty, but not too bad. So I think I can work with that. Again, if I can't get this one running, there's parts on it I can use for other projects. Well, there we go. That compact computer still not working. As I said, that uh, battery change, complete shot in the dark to see if that would work. It didn't. And as I said, that computer is like 25 years newer than the ones I'm used to working on. So I'm kind of just going at this blindly. If uh, you possibly know of other things I could try it to see if I could get that thing going, um, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll do a little bit more research, but it's probably going to end up that I'm just going to scavenge parts off of it for other projects. Now, the iMac is a different story. It's booting, but not properly. So I'm going to look into a few possible ways of getting that working properly. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking there might be a hard drive swap in the future for this computer. So yeah, that will be a future video. All right. Well, Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget that a like, a subscribe and a comment below are all things that will greatly help the channel and are greatly appreciated. But I guess for now I just have to say, see you next time.